Hello and welcome to another episode of Puck Dynasty, part of the Fantasy Hockey Hacks Networks. I'm Ryan Black. I'm here today with Evan Debert. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, my friend. How are you? I'm good, man. You know, it's uh, it's been a good day of World Juniors. Today was the big one. And those big games did not disappoint, unless you're a Canada fan, which of course we are. Doesn't mean the games aren't great. Uh, it's Friday, December 29th, and we are here doing a quick little World Junior hit because there hasn't been much NHL to talk about, really. A few games, uh, enough that I'm stressing about my fantasy hockey matchups anyways, but uh, we'll talk about those next week. Let's get right into it. Deebs, game of the week, last week, a.k.a. this morning. What did you see besides Hugo Havlid? Yeah, yeah, that guy, Christ, he did it under 18s a couple of years ago. Did it again. Sweden hasn't given up a goal all tournament. Is that right? Three shutouts, yep. Three shutouts. Unreal. What an unreal showing for the host team. Um, yeah, no, no, they look great. Uh, Sweden looked really composed, good team effort. Canada, I don't know. Like, it's hard to say because the coming off of a shutout loss, it's easy to dog on them. But. I just feel like they're lacking like true finishers on that team. I don't like the you know? lines. You look like- I think the lines are a mess. I don't know why well, Fraser Minton is getting all this primo offensive ice when you got guys like, let's say, just pick one, Brandon Yeager. Give him some power play time. Like Minton had that, uh, when they had that power play with five minutes left, cross ice, wide open feed, and he blew the pass over to Celebrini by like four feet. Like that's not a guy. Who you should have on PP1, in my opinion. And that's just one of the many irks I have about the coaching we're seeing here from uh, Allard. Allard? No. From uh, what? Uh, uh, no. Um, Latang. Um, Latang, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I don't know what he's doing. I, not, not to say that a great coach could even get necessarily much better results, but the lines don't make much sense to me right now. It's well, you know, you know, I love Matt Matthew Wood, um, really? <laughs> but and yeah, and and you might disagree with this, but but he had a great game last game on the power play, he got three points and all that. Now he's got spot duty in a big game against Sweden, and like that's his spot. He has he has proven chemistry with Celebrini too. I found it surprised the the mitten spot. You know, I don't know, like he's he's touted more of a like a two way forward. Like a very headsy player, um, I just feel like he's getting the benefit of the doubt because he stuck around in the NHL he's older. longer than he's other an guys. Older player too. Yeah. Like I get it. I just think that when it's not going right, switch it up. Another guy I think who's been one of the better players all tournament is Danielson, and he's not getting any extra love either. I feel like every time he's out yeah. there, he's he's doing the right thing. So. I don't know. It doesn't... Uh, right now, I'm not loving the lines. I certainly think the power play is a mess. And there's just... There hasn't been any clicking really yet. You know, Dumai has been completely non-existent. Uh, find someone he can click with. You know, they, these lines aren't working. And anyways, we'll see what happens. I don't love our chances beating Sweden or U.S., but... Uh, we'll see what happens. A couple bounces that game. It's a lot closer, but, um, you know, Savoy doesn't lose the puck on the breakaway. Uh, you know, that one-timer. I thought, I thought I think Savoy's been playing great all tournament. He's just been snake bit. Um, yeah, if you if you watch the games, you can see it's like he's playing, but if you look at, if you watch the score scorecard, it's like, oh, well, he's doing nothing out there. So it's that's been... A little up and down tourney so far for Canada, but again, Sweden, host country, looking good. And uh, it's coming down. They got the Finns on New Year's Eve, and and uh, Canada's got Germany. New you Year's know the Eve, home so. ice advantage, though? Like, they were showing clips of the, of the crowd, and there were quite a few shots where there were more Canada jerseys than Sweden jerseys. Not that I'm surprised, but I'm not sure that you can pin it on the home ice because that Canada crowd is ruckus. Mind you... 
Yeah, I wouldn't say home ice. I just think they're doing well for host. Yeah, they're doing well. Host country. It's, you it know, feels honestly, good. Yeah. if Henrik Lundqvist was in the crowd, like if the if Martin Brodeur was in the crowd for Canada, maybe we would have had a better result. Henrik certainly. You think Bo- so? Did you see yeah. when they panned to both the brothers? I always forgot Lundqvist is a twin. I must have been taking a bathroom break yeah. or something when I that was that was right after the big save, but. Um, yeah. That was a huge yeah. save. That yeah, was a so, huge so, save by two nothing win? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was that was a beauty. He, he's had a good tournament too. I like him. He's not he's he's got like the top two saves of the tournament. So it's far. an interesting year Mark. in the goaltending because the US are the only ones with highly touted goaltending. Havlid's undrafted. Uh Canada's guy is Russo. Russo is undrafted. It's an interesting interesting tourney in that regard. Uh, all right, what's our game of the week this week, pal? Well, I think it's we'll find out after New Year's Eve into the quarters and the semis. But for what we know of right now, it's uh, it's top spot in that that Group B, I guess it would be the Slovaks and USA. Yeah, but that's an early one tomorrow. Yeah. Oof. It's almost unfair to pick a game of the week at this. Point. Or not tomorrow on New Year's Eve. Yeah, picking a yeah. game of the week right now is silly because there's going to be about six games we'll probably talk about. But that'll be our game I know. of the week right yeah. now. Hey, it's it, it's lining up for Canada, U.S. and the Sammies. So, yeah, and you know, while we're talking about underperforming teams, uh, the U.S. has, in my mind, not played to the best of their abilities either. I kind of thought they'd roll through this tournament with six, seven, eight goals a game, and today's game was a nail biter. Yeah, great game. Yeah, check slowed it down. Yeah, it was a it was a strategic game, and yeah, some of that, you know, you almost feel like the U.S. wants to play this like fast paced like Harlem Globetrotter type hockey, and it's just once the once the game gets a little too close, that stuff just doesn't work, and then the momentum swings happen real quick against mm-hmm. you. Well, so, I'll say this. It doesn't look yeah. like either of us. It looks like we're going to go 0 for 6 in our players of the tournament so far, if you ask me. Yeah, he, well, I'll, I'll say this much. For my um, Lakari Mecki uh, pick, if he hit the net, he might have a chance. The guy's got a rocket of a shot, but he he misses the net more than... More than anyone yeah, out he there. does. So, Yo's know looked really good for yeah. them in a non fantasy setting as Elias Patterson has been really, really good. I was really impressed by his game today. Totally. Uh, yeah. I mean, they, were, they just played a really good team game, and I'm surprised. That's where I'm kind of surprised the States hasn't found that kind of cohesion yet because a lot of those guys play together. Either, you know, you have the Dreamline playing together all last year and this year in Boston. These guys have played together a lot, a lot more than Team Canada has, for sure. So I thought I thought there'd be a little yeah. more. Um, anyways, let's dive into some of our some of the guys who have caught our eyes so far for the games. Do you just want to lead through this list as as it's laid out here? Start with the American. Yeah, I think let's we're we're gonna run through the uh, the top performers through the first three games of the tournament for each each of the contenders at least. Um, yeah, we're not we doing really Latvia. have any of the, or Germany. Yeah, Latvia. Yeah, we'll just say Germany's Germany done. Germany has well. done well. We'll that was a that. big game against yeah. them, but the Finns have been so underwhelming so far too. Uh, all right, for the states, these are some of the guys who have caught our eyes, and probably yours as well. Uh, Frank Nazar the third. Franklin Nazar the third has been a very good yeah. player. You and I were talking about well, both these first two guys on the list, but he's actually. I'm not surprised at his playmaking abilities. He's known for that, but I'm blown away by what a smart forechecker he is. He pressures the puck wonderfully, and him and Brindley, who's the next guy on our list, have been a nightmare for the deep pairings that they're that they're chasing down every night or morning, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, both both really tenacious. Um, the thing again, like, and it's been Nazar to Brindley all tournament, but uh, when Nazar makes the pass he puts you in primo scoring position he waits he looks off the defender so so yeah that bodes well big time for the future because chicago's going to be looking for for someone who'll be setting up bedard and and not making not having bedard do everything himself and create himself all the time so 
Yeah. Well, you know, we say a that. Playmaker on we Chicago. We say that, it's but nice. they went to overtime tonight and four goals, and Dard didn't even have a point. So good for them. Certainly not the norm. Uh, I agree. You and I were talking about Nazar uh, this afternoon, and I think he's the number one guy you should be chasing on Chicago that isn't Bedard. I think he's most likely to play yeah. with them. Uh, they're not going to try and make him a center. He's going to be a winger there, and there's a good chance he'll be feeding Bedard pucks for a long time. Uh, Brinley, to me, as a Brinley owner, has just been everything and more. Uh, his two goals that he scored yesterday were both just pinpoint accurate goals. His forecheck has been amazing. Yeah. Uh, a lot of good passes. Like he, this kid can do it all. And we saw it last year with Michigan. He started slow, and then when he got put with Fantilli, he took off and you know shot his way up the draft rankings. But now with with uh, with Fantilli gone, he's he's doing very well again, and he's been one of the state's better players. Certainly, certainly one of the better finishers in the tournament so far. Uh, and just all around, like, I was actually surprised he wasn't out there on the, I know that their power play units are fairly locked in, but that was one decision, uh, when the States got the power play in overtime, I was surprised they didn't put out Nazar and Brindley there because those guys were rocking it all game. I get Snuggy Bear is one of the guys who's going to put it away and there's no, Cutter Gauthier had a lot of good plays, but, uh, I would have rolled with the hot hand in overtime. Did they not have Nazar playing net front on that power play? I didn't. I don't think it was. It, it, I thought because he peeled out and there was a one-time pass from from Cutter. I maybe thought. He, um, I thought it was Nazar, but um, but, uh, but yeah, that those those two as a pair because they they both play in Michigan too, right? So there's there's that chemistry going on there, and and like you said with Brindley as leading into the draft last year, I was a little trepidatious on him just because because he didn't do much until he got put with Fantilli and he's undersized and and all that and um and actually it was a is a question I posed to you early in the tournament seeing as they're both Columbus prospects like who do you like who do you like better him or Dumas you know oh yeah what did I say both similar players <laughs> I'll take Brindley 10 times out of 10. I, I don't think they're that similar players, to be honest. I think offensively... Similar well, mold, they're similar right? frame, but um, I yeah. haven't noticed Dumai on the forecheck once. And I haven't seen great defensive plays from him, whereas Brindley has been a 200-foot player. Uh, and then, I mean, offensively, it's tough to say who maybe in a perfect world would have a higher ceiling, but I'll take the 200-foot guy. I think for Dumai... The problem with him is you can't be tiny and completely invisible in two of the three zones. And that's something he's struggling with right now. Brindley doesn't have that problem. So I'll take Brindley. And you got the Fantilli connection, which can only help in the future. So if I'm taking one of those guys, it's not really a question. And even their draft position would tell you, you know, the scouts were higher on Brindley to begin with. So I'd take I'd take Brindley yeah. of those two. But, I mean, you know, those 130-point QJMHL players every now and again, one of them pops. So, too early to say for sure. But if I'm chasing one, it's Brindley right now. Yeah, I can, I can see that. The thing I've noticed with Dumai um, in, in the tournament is when he's rushed quickly when he has the puck, it's a, the play isn't necessarily, you know, that slick. He'll make the safe play and all that, but he's, he's not creating – a lot. So when when space becomes limited, uh, he's not he's not nearly the creative player he is in the queue. When he might have that extra half set, well, and that's been to to make kind that's of been what I've seen a lot of for him is he doesn't have that first and second step to make that space to be able to create something more than the safe play. So I think uh, he's got to work on some skating stuff mechanics to probably yeah. be an impact guy. Too bad he could. Too bad he could not. Um, he's he's a good example of a guy that maybe would have benefited going the NCAA route instead of sticking around in the queue and having to play there for three, four yeah, years. The queue's not doing any favors no. right now, for sure. It's not. Yeah. He's not learning anything as far as you know what you're seeing in this tournament, where he doesn't have the space because there's better defenders. 
Yeah. On the third, I mean, and, you can talk about the whole team USA, but uh, Snuggerud has been vicious, just dangerous, dangerous out there. Had a hat trick, and I think it was nine minutes and fourteen seconds yesterday. Uh, that top line, they look good again today. I, I have no complaints. They didn't finish, but it was kind of a low-scoring day for the for the studs. Um, but yeah, Snuggerud is a guy. You moved recently, right? What's up? Because there's more sirens at this house. <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, I've been hearing yeah, sirens a... and motorcycles. Are you on 17th now? I'm close. Oh. I'm close. I'm We're... I'm in yeah. Beltline. So yeah, uh, it's it sounds you know, like 17th. Downtown Levin. Remember 17th. So. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Snuggy's been great. Um, confidence. That's the thing I've noticed a lot with him. Like he, he's very confident in his ability to make the play, uh, to take the shot, to look off maybe a better shooter or not a better shooter, but a you know a, uh, like a cutter on a two on one. He'll take the shot. So, yeah, really impressed with him, and he looks like I remember vividly in the summer you say it's like. Dude's going to score 40 in the NHL. He's going to score 40 in the NHL. Trust me. And uh, I'm starting to see Oh, it. that's right. Yeah, when we were doing our top prospects. Yeah. yeah he, he's a yeah. he's a guy. I, I see him as like one of those 40, 25 guys going forward because he looks off the pass all the time. <laughs> he's like, I, yeah. I don't remember him ever seeing a shot he didn't like. And that's fine. You need a guy to put the puck away. And actually, I think that playing with Cairo and Thomas in the future are one of them anyways. Uh, it's it's going to be a nice spot for him. So he's a good asset to chase. Uh, I'm going to throw in a couple meh. Let's call this the mess. Uh, Lane Hudson has been terribly disappointing so far this tournament. I really thought that he was going to come out and smack everyone around. And he still might. He looked better in the second half of today's game. And, you know, I, I will say, especially on that four on three in overtime, um, he's the brains. You know, you can see it. He goes up top. He makes a shifty fake pass one way, goes the other way, creates some space. So he is doing good things, but I certainly thought he'd be more productive on the score sheet. And then the other mech I'm going to throw out there just to embarrass both of us is neither goaltender is really stepping up and stealing the show for USA so far. Fowler was very good in the shootout. Uh, but otherwise, I, I, I think that's that net. Is he though? It's like the guy's shot it right at him. Yeah. Like, Half the time, he barely had to move. Uh, well, he, uh, he, he he didn't move in the right place. He did. He, he made a couple of nice saves. <laughs> but um, yeah, the goaltending for us has not been fantastic compared to the rest of the tournament. Um, Hudson, I was trying to like figure out what's going on and to like articulate it in my brain. As you and as you know, that's difficult for me to do. But uh, it's uh, I think for him. Because he's a bit of a, I wouldn't say a puck hog, but he can like one man show it a lot of times. And I think he feels a little guilty doing that, surrounded with so much talent. So he's moving the puck a little bit quicker. And uh, But when he's in his groove is when he's making those cuts and those jukes and those moves and you know creating these crazy plays and he's just kind of simplifying his game. But it still doesn't make any sense why he put up zero points and, I don't know, you know, eleven goal game. Yeah. Um, well, you know, so yeah, it's just one of those things. Just one know, of those things. I, I I don't think we have him on the list here, and we should. Aziv Bayam has been an absolute revelation as a seventeen year old defenseman. Uh, he had that breakout pass today that was absolutely gorgeous. Um, he's he's just looked poised as heck, and I think about what he's going to look like should he make it to a third world juniors like Hudson. I don't think we'll be seeing the same thing. I am that kid. For me, the top four next year has Zeev Bayam in, in a fantasy draft. I've said that a few times. Uh, I think that he's the first defenseman off the board for, for fantasy purposes. And that is my early, I guess, late December prediction is I don't see how, how he won't stick around. How he won't be off the board quick. First D man off the yeah. board. Fantasy. Fantasy. There you go. 
Yeah. In, 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 in the real, it's going to be all over the place, but he's going to be, he's going to be impactful. Obviously depends what team he goes to. We talked about this last week, but uh, after what I've seen through a few games with him, I'm happy we had him in our top 10 for sure. Uh, let's move on to the Canadians. This one's fairly self-explanatory. Well, certainly the top guy on the list, Macklin Celebrini. What a coming out party. Not that he needed it, but, uh, this kid just keeps doing it against older and better competition. Yeah, it was, it was too bad. He got blank today. He still had a pretty decent game and you, and you can see, see the skills. You see, you just see flashes of, um, of elite players in him. Like sometimes when he does a quick cut, uh, it looks like Sid out there. Um, yeah, he's he's a great player. That that five point game was sure fun to watch. We were like, oh my, is this Bedard two point happening right in front of our eyes? But uh, but yeah, no, it's he's he's had you know couldn't find the chemistry with the teammates today or or vice versa. But uh, yeah, the guy just oozes skill. I think Bob McKenzie summed it up in in a few words, where it's just like it's hands meets feet meets head, yeah. and it's just and he's got nice it all. To see Bob again, hey, yeah. Damn, I, know. I miss that guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'll say this about I don't. I I think I said this to you. We were talking about the blowout games, and I have no time for them. I don't care. Uh, and you were saying it's nice for the record chasing. I said, well, we're not going to see that this tourney. Bedard had a lot better help than Celebrini had. I think if 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 you put yeah. Celebrini. In the same circumstance with Stankoven and Roy, I think is who Bedard spent most of the tournament with last year, if I recall. Um, yes, and he had Gunther, and he had on, Gunther that on that trigger spot. Uh, I th- yeah, with Zellweger. I, I think yeah. you're seeing a much better Celebrini. You know that 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 goal that Jaeger scored yesterday. Uh, he shot it through the goalie. Like, it was a lucky goal, but it was a beautiful play by Celebrini on the drop pass, setting him up. And that's a play that last year, Stankoven and Roy weren't missing on. And Jaeger, he didn't miss, but there have been quite a few plays where I'm just like, ah, you know, the lack of chemistry, the lack of just overall high-end ability on this Canadian team is fairly apparent. And maybe they just need another year. Uh, if you took this same team back next year, you might see more of it. Maybe they just need more of that. It's just the transition of the tournament, really. It's just it's easy to look at it and be like, "Oh, Canada just doesn't have a team this year." It's like it, it's almost like to win back to backs is hard to do. To win back to back to backs is impossible to do, and um, and you almost have to like reload for like a team like Canada. You have to reload every second year because you got to go eighteen year olds. I don't know about that. I think it's just a down turn. I mean, how many years were we? You know, in the gold medal game. This is an 18-year-old team. This is an 18-year-old team like, for sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe last year they could have brought one or two younger guys, but I don't. I don't know that I necessarily agree that you. Ha- it, it's not like the NHL where there's anything holding Canada back. We can usually send a pretty stacked team. This year, unfortunately, most of our talent is is in the NHL. Might not have been the same every other year, but um, we'll get to the NHL talent in a minute. Um, yeah, I just I I think it's a little bit of a downturn here for for Canada. And you know, how about this? Here is why it's happening because these NCAA guys are inclined to stick around in in juniors a year longer. All of the state's best players are NCAA guys who, if they were going back to the queue instead of going for, like if Cutter Gauthier played in the WHL, he probably would have stuck in Philly this year instead because there's not much a guy like that's going to take from the WHL. It's the best route. I tell you, it's, if, if I was advising a young, good hockey player, I'd be saying... Go to USHL or BCHL for a year or two, and then go to college for a year. Yeah. Plus, you get the yeah. college life. Uh, you get the college life. More Canadian players. Matej Chuck, nice to see that he didn't suffer anything too crazy today. Oh, that would have been devastating. Yeah, if he. Yeah, that that would have been. He he's been good. I've you know as he's, he's come as advertised. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
you know, it's, it's a slick, good skating defenseman. Uh, just doesn't just lacks that that finish and. But uh, but given every opportunity, like a lot, he's got to carry a lot of weight on there. I think I think one of Canada's problems this tournament is just those the losses on the blue line right before the tournament starts with Luno and um, Molendek. Yeah, so I'd certainly those agree are, with those that. Are two. Although I would say that I do think that Matejchuk is a step down from what we've seen on the blue line in recent years as well. For sure, uh, it, watching this tournament. It makes me happy not to be a Matej Chuck owner. He's a good player, but with his situation in Columbus, with them having all the guys ahead of them that they do, uh, I think back to Juracek in this tournament the last couple of years. I put Juracek well ahead of him. You know, Wierenski's there, Provorov's there. So yeah. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, from what from what we saw. Yeah, I, I mean it. From what we saw last year with Juracek versus Matejchuk this year, has 19-year-olds in this tourney. Uh, yeah, I got to give the, the slant to, to Juracek on that one. Sure. Uh, Geeky is a guy who I don't think we have talked about once since we started the show. Uh, he's an 11th overall, former 11th overall pick. Uh, he has looked really good at times. Um, today, I wanted more from him. I, I, I'm not putting him as a meh. Because he's been good, um, but you know this is a tournament that a big D plus two should be dominating, and he is not. Um, but you know we'll see how he bounces back. He should be a leader on this team, and he was certainly good leading up to today. Uh, the only mech I have for for Canada so far, Putra man, <laughs> I was really hoping to see more from him than we have seen so far. It, uh, when you step down from NHL comp to World Juniors, I expect more from Putra than I've seen. Um, he ha- he has been a, a victim of, again, lack of chemistry, which I think you can say for most of this team. But I'd like to see him do a little bit more on his own. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I've, I've thought the same thing. Uh, uh, I, it's a, he's surprisingly not as quick as I expected him uh, in this tournament, and his shot he seems to be shooting right into the goalie mm-hmm. every time. So might be you know might be gripping the stick a little too hard. Um, yeah, he's he's had chances, he's made plays happen, but it's just it's just not not going his way so far. But it's the it's it's the lack of quickness that's really surprised me the most. So it's like that's something that that's definitely going to need to be worked on moving forward for him. Well, you know what it reminds me of, and this is maybe a uh, predication. Maybe I'm just clairvoyant. Is that what you said a few months ago? Yeah, I sure uh, did. Yeah. It reminds me of when Nugent Hopkins came back and played in the World Juniors. Way back in what was it, 2013, he he had a good tournament. He was almost two points per game, but the team I don't think I, that might it might have been the year we didn't even make it to the bronze. Yeah, they only played six games. Um, he wasn't what I expected him to be, Nugent Hopkins in that tournament. Even though he put up two points per game, I mean, with the with the fodder you get, a first overall pick should do more than that. Who's when he's coming back with NHL experience. Uh, that's what Putra has reminded me of this year, where it's like, I, I wonder how hard it is to A, the pace change from NHL to juniors, but coming in and knowing you're like one of one player in this tournament with more than 15 games of NHL experience, yeah. all eyes are going to be on you. The expectations are heavy on you. And... I don't know that there's a player that necessarily even is best suited to be playing with Putra. I think it's a tough spot to be in. And I think we're seeing that with him so far this tournament. That's possible. Like from, from players that I've known that have gone to high levels and then come back down, um, whether it's like uh, to NHL camps and things like that, it's what they say is like the thing you notice the most is that everyone does their job to a T at that mm-hmm. high level and when you come back down guys are kind of like all over the place it seems like even though it's still really good hockey it's you just when you when you're at that elite level you know whether it's nhl ahl dub 
dubbed to junior a whatever um it's you, you can you can notice the difference in like in the players and them doing their job and stay staying in their well, lanes especially when you're um coming to a team that hasn't played together on top of that yeah like no system right yeah no chemistry especially canada because like all these other countries they played together heaps but and throughout their whole like childhood like the unders under 17s under 18s but canada we're we're always stuck in these world tournaments where which team are we sending can these guys go because canadian juniors are going things like that so a lot of these guys don't get to play together to nearly the same amount but it's not an excuse we we dominate this tournament you know on a six out of ten scale but but uh yeah yeah just makes it makes it more competitive i like it yeah yeah for sure uh next up we're going to talk about the swedes who we saw today uh really more of a team effort that i've seen from sweden so far with Lekermeki missing the net nine times out of ten. It's hard to flag one guy. You know, what I'll say before we get into the good, I thought Edstrom could have had four goals today, but on those plays, he I don't think he got a shot off on any of them. <laughs> you know, there's early in the game, there was that one slick feed uh, that came to him right in the slot. He was walking in, no one between him and the goalie, and he fumbled it into the corner. And it was just more of that, yeah. more of that, more of that. He's a guy who clearly knows where to go, but his his stick can't keep up with his brain so far. That was I noticed him on the bad side. Uh, on the good side, Otto Stenberg has been very good so far. Yeah. Like, so continuing it on from the under-18s last year, and... Yes, uh, St. Louis, great pick there. I, I couldn't believe that he fell into the twenties to them. <clears throat> you know, last year was a stacked draft, but the guys, the guy just oozes confidence, leadership, great shot. Um, it was cool him getting a Hattie in his home barn there. That's that was pretty sweet. Uh, but yeah, that that whole line with um, Felix Unger, Sorum, and and Edstrom have been lethal. Uh, we already talked about uh, LeCarri Mackey, you know, um, Oslin, Bystrom, you know, they're like, it's by committee that's going on in Sweden with an absence of Axel Sandin Pelica, who's been invisible. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't really noticed him much, which has been surprising. I've been trying to, but, but uh, yeah, no, that's. Swedes, Swedes are looking good so far. Yeah, that's a balanced team. A lot of steady, a lot, a lot of NHLers coming from that team. You can tell. There's going to be a lot of second, third liners. Yeah. Coming from yeah, there. I don't know that there's yeah. a single star on that team, but uh, certainly I agree that there's a lot of second, third liners there. Uh, and then Hugo Havlid doing it again. You know, I, uh, I'm not going to go find the tape, but he was going to be my pick for goalie of the tournament if I wasn't going to spite you. <laughs> Was there tape? You have tape I'm, on I'm it? almost sure that I said I would pick Hugo Havlid, but I'm going to take Augustine just to spite you. Uh, I, I oh, could dig it up. It was towards the end of two yeah. episodes ago. I'll, maybe I'll, I'll track that down for next week. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. surprised. He's having a great tournament in front of that team with that structure at all. Uh, he's looked very good, and I'd imagine that the NHL will come calling for him next year very much like... Uh, Thomas Millich. Millich. Yeah. yeah. Great minds. Hey, that's not even. Folks, we don't do a lot of notes. And on this episode, we have no notes. Uh, I'm glad that we both went straight to Millich there. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We, we share the same brain uh, sometimes. Gross. Yeah. Gross. Uh, <laughs> Slovakia. A lot of high scoring Woo! performers. A lot of exciting players. Uh, dive into this one for me, pal. Well, we'll start with, um, you know, the the, the goalie, Guyan. Goalie of the tournament last year. He's played well again here. Um, get the big shutout. Be a big test tomorrow, or not tomorrow, on, on New Year's Eve against against USA. And so, so yeah, it starts with him and gives them the confidence. And then um, Tr- Petrovsky, he's got... What is he? Does he have eight points? He's got five goals. He's leading tournament scoring. Yeah, Servak Petrovsky. He's got five Petrovsky. goals, three assists. Petrovsky. 
Petrovsky? Petrovsky, yeah, sorry. I'm, I added an extra syllable in there. Yeah, he's, um, he's been uh, very, Hansik, very good. Very, very good. Sturback. Uh, yeah. You could, you could just keep naming their top six, basically, and they keep yeah. Hanzik, a Flames draft pick, been solid, great net front presence. Um, Messer has been having a nice rebound year in a hole. I know you were kind of down on him for a little bit there, but uh, but but yeah, Habs Habs fans are happy again with him. And, yeah, they're getting there. You know, he and, was uh, the Habs fans were screaming bloody murder because it was thought that he was taken as a comfort for. Slavkovsky in that draft, especially with some of the guys who went behind him. He did have a tough time adjusting last year, and he hasn't been lights out so far, but uh, in this tournament, he's been very, very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah and then... For sure. They get the leading scoring defenseman, Maxime Strayback. Got six points so far. And, and Dvorsky. Uh, yeah, he's, he was held off the score sheet until today. Put up two goals to assist in the big win. Their their first big win of the tourney. So, so yeah, they're yeah, their their whole top six is rolling. And yeah, so that's a, that's a scary he, team. They might end up on the podium. I think. Well, they if they finish first in their division, well, they finish second. They'll get Swedes in the semis. They make it. So. Anything could happen. They could they could make it to the gold medal game with a little bit of luck, especially if Guyane's the legit. It's hard to say, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm surprised we both didn't even didn't even pick him as the the reigning goalie of the tourney. But we both just thought it was a bit fluky. Uh, you know, I wasn't I wasn't sold that their top six was going to be this good. To be honest, I thought they were going to lose a lot of. Four one games. Looking at looking at that roster, I mean, you know, I'm not sold on Mazar. Hanzik was an interesting pick. Uh, I thought a lot was going to be riding on Dvorsky, and he's been, you know, third or fourth fiddle so far. But they're heating up at the right time. Going to be fun to watch these upcoming games. Uh, games that won't be fun to watch. The Finns, man, they're boring. <laughs> what a boring team this year. No one's got anything going on. Even Consta Hellenius has not impressed so far. We have no one to talk about from Finland. I'm going to keep watching Consta, but uh, yeah, this he's he's looked okay. He's looked okay. Like he's a good zone entries, good speed, mm, not bad. Um, Who's their leading scorer? Uh, Casper Haltonen, two goals, one assist. But I've I've been follow falling out of love with Finnish yeah. hockey for for a since, little while here, especially the like Puljujarvi Line year. That was fun. That was a really fun team. That was, um, that was a, well. That, but yeah, it's and, and and a lot of it's like with their development too. It's just. I think I think NHL teams are learning pretty quick that you don't want your first round or second round draft picks sticking around in Liga because it's just the systems that they play there. They're so def- so defensive oriented and they're there. It's not a development yeah, league no. for, for players, cool. and so so you could see guys stall out. Like look at um, uh, Joachim Kamel last year, where he had an awful year in Liga. And then he comes over to the AHL for the end of the regular season and the playoffs, and he's scoring goals yeah. like crazy. It's like, well, what the hell's going on here? You know, and so it's not like it's not like league is a better league than the AHL, but it's just it's just their structure. It's just not not for development of offensive no. players. No, they're kind of the anti-Russia. You know, Russia encourages uh, that high-end skill and wow factor, and Finland is. Learn to check. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's it's so finish of them too. It's like no, totally. no. it's you boring. Take, I don't, we don't care. I we don't care if it's boring. Yeah. Uh, and speaking yeah. of checks, that's the next team on our list. Uh, there you oh, go. Man, yeah. did I ever want Kulich to score on that last couple rushes he had against the states? That would have been legendary. But uh, he's very much a shooter. Hey, like yes. Yes. Uh, the more I watch of him, the more I see a guy like I think that his absolute high end 
is Pasternak, but he's going to have to learn how to create shots on his own to get there. Because when you get him the puck on the power play with space, he's as lethal a prospect as there is. But when he's carrying the puck, he doesn't. He's not going to create that elite scoring chance on his own. Uh, so, but still, a heck of a player to watch. That hat trick he scored in the opening game was beautiful. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing him the rest of the tournament. It, but the the states did a good job against him today. And then uh, Edward Sit is it uh, Sale? Is it just Sale? Sh- Chalet, Chalet, right? Chalet, Swiss, Swiss yeah. Chalet. Uh, He's having himself a tourney. He's not really lighting it up in the OHL so far this year, much to the chagrin of Seattle Kraken fans. I guess you can't nail all your picks. Uh, But he is looking very good in this tournament so far. Looked good today. Yeah, looks like a good headsy player. Um, You know, doesn't necessarily shine in one skill set. But, but, you know, he'll he'll be a middle six forward. Come come around the bend, I think, for Seattle. And, and, you know, it's got some potential there, but um, yeah. And then with with Coolidge, uh, yeah, everything looks good. I I I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm I don't know if I'm correct in like thinking this, but his feet just seem just a, a tad slow or heavy. Like it's just I just wanted a little bit more speed from the guy, but I guess you can't have everything when you're the best goal scorer in the AHL at 19. And so, yes, I guess that's what separates him from being the super mega elite, I suppose. Yeah, I do worry that his floor is some kind of version of Mike Kaufman. Mm. Nah, Mike, Mike Kaufman, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. he had a 40-goal year, so maybe, maybe that's not so bad. But, uh, you know, he'll certainly be a threat on an NHL power play. But, uh, you know, even when he's been called up to Buffalo, uh, when they called up him and Rosen, it was Rosen who got the third line and Coolidge who got the fourth line. So yeah. it's, a, it's an interesting thing. We'll see where it goes. I'm still very, very high on the guy, but there are some things he could do better for sure. Uh, and five on five is one of those things. For the checks, though, um, their goalie, um, Rabel, oh, yeah. he, he he started the tournament slow. That game against Slovakia wasn't great, but he was awesome today. Um, huge, huge goalie. And so, and the puck just seems to kind of stick to him. That, that shootout goal that Perot scored was funny because it was going five hole and it like banked off of him. And it was just, you could tell Perot was kind of. Just like he was like shaking his head, he's like I wasn't trying to that do that. And obviously, the goalie didn't goal. like that. <laughs> well, he was trying to go five hole, right? And yeah, it was just such a like that would have won the game for the checks, right? But um, but yeah, he's he's looked better as the tournament's gone on, and you can see you can see the skill set there where he's where was he drafted? Zona, by? Coyotes? Zona, in the second yeah. round last year. Yeah, yeah, I mean he's he's six. Yeah, six. so high pick. Uh, yeah, still only eighteen. He's he's turning nineteen right away, and yeah, he's yeah. he's looked very very good for sure. That's encouraging. So, yeah, both both the Czechs and and uh, Slovaks could surprise for sure. I mean, they did today. Uh, ooh, I just moved my screen. What's next? What are we talking about next? Now we're gonna talk about oh, just some general surprises. Yeah, we've kind of covered all this already. Uh, Shut up. Do you, do you still think uh, you still think our our prediction? I think we both have the same U.S. gold, Sweden silver, Canada bronze. You still think that's no, looking? No, I'm not sure Canada is winning the bronze. Uh, I do think I think Sweden played as good a game as they can play today, and it was a very very good game. Uh, I I do think that the state still has. <laughs> two more levels to show us and they've got some time to get there um i still like the states to win it just because there's too much talent and chemistry on that team not to uh they just have to what does the states got to do i mean they're undefeated so it's not like they're on their heels or anything uh the just pick the guy who's gonna score before the shift you know like really these lines are so deep and so talented i've noticed it a lot with cutter where he's passing 
on shots he doesn't normally pass on. And that second guessing, they have to stop. And once they stop second guessing themselves and deferring, I think that they'll be a bit more lethal of a team. Uh, and that, like, I expect to see more out of Hudson in this tournament. Uh, I expect Bayam to keep progressing. Uh, Seamus Casey has been very, very good. He's a very, very good player. Just an embarrassment of riches on that New Jersey blue line. Uh, and then I think that one of their goaltenders are going to step up and, and be the guy. So I, I still think that it'll be U.S. on top. I'd be shocked if it wasn't. Um, because I do think that they can overpower Sweden, especially on that third line. So that's in a matchup. If we see Sweden play the game they played today, I would expect um, the U.S. to come out 3-2 or something like that is what I'd be looking at. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. As for the bronze, and Canada's looking, looking vulnerable. Yeah, Slovaks could take out Canada yeah. in the bronze. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, we've covered all these surprises already, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip this. Other than to say uh, the Zeev Bayam show, <laughs> he's he is so poised. Just he's he's sending sixty foot passes, tape to tape, left and right. He's a breakout machine. Like he is, he is every scout's dream as far as what you can do offensively. Um, I think next year will be really interesting once he gets drafted to see what the team who drafts him tells him to work on. I think we might see one of those years where uh, the player has a better draft year than a draft plus one because they'll tell him to maybe work on some of that D stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I just I'm in love with this player. He's so good. It's such a strange draft for this year with um, three potential high picks playing in the NCAA. They're doing what they're doing. Yeah. As, and then Cole Eiserman, by all accounts, could have gone to BU as well. He's but next he year. decided to. He is, but he, he could have gone this year, I think, but he, he decided to stay the is course right? with um, the under 18 oh, team. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think like just with some acceleration from edgy, like they would have made it work, right? Uh, but um, interesting. I don't know. I might I might be wrong. Who knows? But uh, but yeah, and then uh, Lushenov, uh, Michigan State too. Who's who's my like, to your to your Byam or Booyam or however they're pronouncing him uh, on on it's TV. It's Byam, as uh, in Byam while you can. <laughs> I think you had both his names pronounced wrong when I was listening to the broadcast. Instead of Zeev, it's Zev. Oh, well, and then it's Boom. I never said Boom. There's not no one there. I would yeah. never. No, that's what they, on the oh, TV. They were they saying said. that's his name. Oh. They were saying Ze- it's Ze- Zev Boom. Zev Boom. Zev Boom. Oh, shit. Yeah. That doesn't make know, any sense. Like both, both names. There's, two, there's Zev, two E's. Zev is one E. <laughs> yeah, it's two E's. Zev. Uh, Byam's way cooler than Booyam. Booyam, Booyam I, I would get. Booyam. Is know, it Booyam? I, I, I think uh, we call him Zaboom. Just, we'll just call Zaboom. him Zaboom from now on. That'll be the puck to uh, Rusty. But hey, future game of the week, we're going... Michigan State versus Denver, and we're gonna put it on because I'm 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 on the Louvre train, and you're on the Boom train. So. I think that'll be a game we'll, we'll both we'll come see. away happy from. Those guys are both gamers, and I agree that Lev is probably the number two. He's he's the only guy pushing for number two fantasy D man for me right now. Uh, I just I, I haven't yeah, seen I'd this so. him either. Dynasty show. Oh, you want to talk about Russia? You want to talk about Russia? Well, it was just something that came up this week that, you know, it's, uh, well, they, they, t- they, they talk about earlier in the summer, too, but uh, but there was some leak or something that that Putin wants to make sure that there's some sort of, like, entry-level contract yeah, well, for player, Putin Russian players. also Russian wants players. to win the Ukraine war, so I'm not sure. <laughs> this is true. But... This is something that he could control with intimidation, too. So it's it is um, interesting. So what I saw was they're looking at five-year contracts yeah. uh, on younger players. Uh, so you're going to be talking about 16 to 18-year-olds 
signing for five years in Russia. It certainly would change things at the NHL draft table, that's for sure. I mean, there's already teams that aren't the Coyotes who are very scared to draft Russians. You throw in five-year contracts yeah. on top of that and no control over development. Uh, well, how bad does that last draft look for them if those guys have to stay for five years? Uh, well, like, no, so it's it's like Zach it's Benson, not like, it's not existing I know, I know. players. It's it's guys who they're it's future contracts. Well, but, you know, who's to stop them from saying it's starting now? Well, they're contracts. Right? <laughs> if they, if they want to go out and, and, and yes. rip up the contract, yes. But there's this would be the first time Russia's like made like visas. God, yeah. so you can't. Leave. I mean, let, yeah, let's things not, like that. But it like, would be pretty frightening to see what would happen if they terminated yeah. the contracts illegally of twenty NHL prospects and forced them to sign five-year deals. <laughs> I mean, how many right? would defect? How many parents go missing? <laughs> it's just it yeah. would, it's ugly. It would it's be ugly. Very ugly. I think the thing I wonder when I was pondering, it, like as a Mitchkov owner, I was like. Okay, well, his contract is like, if they do do the five years, he did the five years in the K, okay, it's fine. Hey, I already planned on him coming over in three years in our dynasty league. But, um, uh, you know, for kids that are just approaching the draft coming up here that don't have a KHL contract, so, you know, can will they be able to enter the CHL import draft? Or, or will you see guys do like the USHL, then go college route? Like... Um, like a guy like uh, Lushenov did from Belarus, or um, you know Wallander. Or, oh, um, we didn't talk about Wallander. Willander, Willander, yeah, had Willander. Himself a game um, today, he should have been. Our yeah, list. yeah, nice, nice, nice snipe. But uh, yeah, he came over to play college, so it's a, it, it just it'll change the dynamic. And then you look at a guy like uh, Demidov for this year's draft. So with that hanging over the head, it's like, oh, geez. One more reason. It was one thing to wait for Mitchkov for three years, but if you got to wait for a guy to turn 24 till he comes over and he's developing in Russia, dang. Like that, that kills NHL stock. Yeah, it would be interesting so. to see what the line coming out of Vegas would be for how many – under 18 year old Russians leave Russia this summer if this is instigated because the number of guys who want to leave will be exponentially higher than the number of guys who will actually leave how many guys are going to say okay and then hop a midnight flight because <laughs> it's yeah. you're right if, if your goal is to play in the NHL someday there's no chance you can sign that contract like there's just no chance at the very least, you're giving up hundreds of thousands of dollars in contract bonuses on your first contract because very least like KHL players make, well, let's see. So let's say you make the NHL by the time you're 22 or so. So you're giving up two years of NHL salary, you know, by then well, you're the, looking at not just mil. the salary, but the, the, the difference in draft position, right? Like you look at, let's use Demidov as an example. He could be a top five pick right now. If, let's say, he has to sign a five-year contract this summer in Russia, he probably falls to the at least 10, I'd say more like 15, unless he comes back from this injury and absolutely rips it up. So now, like, what's... I, I don't know this number off the top of my head, but what's the entry-level contract for a guy who's drafted 16th versus who's drafted in the top five? It's not that far off for salary um, bonus structure. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking changes about. The bonus structure is considerable. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's just it's a lot of these bonuses are are pretty straightforward for rookies. That it's it would it wouldn't be an earth shattering amount necessarily, especially if you do come in and you do come up. And, you know, win the Calder or stuff like that. You're still hitting that bonus, so it's like it's like you win the Calder, you get X amount of dollars. It's not like it's not like the NFL yeah. for bonus structure like that. So, um, but uh, but yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. Demidov will be an interesting case for this one because Mitchkov was a can't miss because um, you knew definitively that it's three years. Okay, we can deal with that kind of thing 
or at least Philly. Philly knew because that's where he told everyone he wanted to go. He, he told, told Philly. Philly. He to go. So, <laughs> yeah. He just didn't talk to anyone else. Um, but and that, that was the other thing I was thinking about with all this too. It's like, shit. Like if it wasn't for that stupid war, I mean, Mitchkov would be in this turn. Or he'd be in the NHL probably, but but otherwise. Um, well, no, he signed, like, he what signed would that he contract be doing before. Up? He'd, yeah. he'd be in the tournament. He'd yeah. be doing Bedard things, man. Well, he's yeah, sick. Know, he's right? coming off of what did he have? He missed like a month. Pneumonia? Did he have pneumonia? Dude's have a rough year, man. Uh, yeah. uh, when he's playing, he ain't having a rough year. But yeah, it's it's been a strange 365 days for him for sure. I just don't believe anything coming no, out of Russia. Why would you? That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because it's like they, they say that he's sick. It's like, oh, he probably pulled his groin. They just don't want to say. You know, he's probably no, dealing with an egg injury. He's an or... actual sniper, and they needed him on the front for a while. You know? <laughs> like, he's, yeah. he's a war hero. That's yeah. what it is. Uh, you you want to try something go. new here? We, we, we're running a little short for time. You want to try something new? Hit me. I want to talk about an offer that's been made to me in a dynasty league. Oh, Oh, All let's right. hear it. This is an interesting one with lots of angles. Uh, in our Dynasty League, which has been going for 15 years, it's a cap league. Wyatt Johnston has been put on the trade block. And I asked the owner what he wanted for him. Before I heard back, someone else told me the answer was Kyle Connor, who's on a 6.9 two-year deal and he's extendable for another five after that so a pretty pretty darn good player on a pretty darn good deal i heard back from him you know my team pretty well pick two players on my team you think he asked for in return for wyatt johnston (sighs) let's see um we wouldn't be crazy enough to ask for jack hughes no Hold on, let me let me pull it up. I'll quick. just tell you. Quick here. Uh, he wants Jason Robertson, who I have for four years. As I was going to say next, or Rupe Hintz. No, no one wants. Or no Kaprizov? one wants Hintz. Uh, he's got. He asked for Jason Robertson or uh, Charlie McAvoy, who I've got for four years of uh, four point nine million dollars. Uh, in this cap league, there are no dollars available anywhere anymore. I think almost every team in the league is capped out. I did respond with what about Kaprizov? Because Kaprizov makes nine mil and has been fairly underwhelming, though he is a second half guy. Um, what team is, is, is John Sinatra? Helsinki. 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 So this is this is he's on crack. This is he's, this, he's, this like, is, he, like Johnson's a good player. Come on, like but you know, point eight points per game in our weighted three years league. at one mil. He's uh, got another two years after this year at a mil. He just signed his entry. Still, you know, it's an interesting. It's an interesting thing. I would have done your other deal he had going on t- I today instead of he, that for for Kaprizov. Tad Wolf to get the bet to get he, Smith. He yanked the deal. I said, "Let's do it." He oh, did said, he? Uh, I need to think about it. And I was like, "But you made the offer. <laughs> you said, come on." In fairness, Dude. I did say, "No, no, no, hell no." <laughs> so, Fair. Uh, yeah, he doesn't yeah. want it anymore. Um, it's it's. Yeah, Johnston. If, it, if, if Johnston didn't play for Dallas, it's it's the Stankoven thing again. We've talked about Johnson before. I think when we did our prospect draft, like our under 23, um, his issue is that unless he gets top power play yeah. spot in Dallas, he's a sub 70 mm-hmm. point player. Ish. Like he's 70. It's, yeah. But it's like, it's, it's a well known statistic that. Or not well known, but it's like it's an established statistic that unless you are a forward that gets power play one slottage, it's very yeah, difficult it to hit seventy yeah. points. All the way um, Newlander this so, year. So, pardon me. A couple Leafs might break that this year. Who doesn't? Who, well, they've who, got, who they've doesn't got get power? 
Oh, I guess Power Play won. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is It is a conundrum. I was talking to one of the GMs about Stan Coven because he's really high on him. He just got him in that big trade. And I was trying to explain to him. I said, listen, man, like, do you think Stan Coven is Power Play 1, line 1 or 2 or 3? Like, where do you think Stan Coven's going to slot? Because they've got... Maverick Bork as a winger already. Look at what their third line is doing this year with talent on it. Duchesne and Sagan are mangling teams on their third line. I'm not sure that Stankoven isn't their third line guy for quite some time. And he said, yeah, 5'8". He's not going to be a center. Well, Pajo's like a money third line center. And Stankoven would feast. It's possible, yeah. It's possible he gets he gets pigeonholed down into there, but uh, like I, I'm with him. Like I, as Stenko, surprisingly enough, has moved around in that league a fair bit. Like you traded him to me, I traded him to you traded whoever him from Mintuka last to uh, yeah, yeah, I traded him for Mintuka. Um, uh, it's fine because he's a great player. Everyone loves him, but. Uh, it's that size and center slot, but it's like, but if he can, like he seems like the perfect line mate for Robertson and Hints, like really. Or they just go straight up Johnston, Bork, Stanko, and just yeah, you know, that would be vicious. I guess the, the issue I have with that train of thought is as far as player value and value to team. How many times do we see wingers tried at center? So why are you going to take a guy who's a very good center and make him a winger? <laughs> you know? Like, I, I just... I think about what Dallas would look like rolling hints, Johnston, Stankoven. And and right now, Dallas runs a fairly even ice time for their top nine. So it's not like you'd be missing a ton of ice. Uh, I, I, I can't help but think that... He makes a lot of sense on the third line there as they as they cap out. Well, that's that's the thing. Like we we think like fantasy owners who want as much production out of our individual players uh, versus the, the Dallas coach wants to win hockey. Wants to win games hockey games. And the, and GM the GM wants, wants to keep. Yeah, going. so it's like if I can roll th- three lines yeah. with like your your center being hints. Johnston, Stankoven, and rock the wingers that we have on this team too to fill out well, those lines. Helps keep the contracts down too. Hell yeah, yeah. Right? yeah we saw yeah. we saw it with Bouchard for two years. We're seeing it with Sider yeah. right now. So it's uh, I mean, maybe someday he ends up on the top line. I just think they have a lot of options to throw up there as well. So, anyways. Wow, we went at that for. Yeah, it makes it makes the the cap cap leagues are. That's why like that's why I don't even mess with one year leagues that often because it's just I haven't done it in years. Just I, I just love the uh, like algebra between like Kaprizov at nine million versus Johnston at one million. It's like trying to find like what the who's got the better value between the two. Yeah, it's almost always the cheaper guy. The the issue I have no. in that league, I, I told you this today. I've got twenty two forwards who should be playing on my team in the next two to three years. So, you guys spend the money somewhere, but you can never have too many of those cheap guys. We're seeing it. You know, it's 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 kept me in top spot in that league for a while, and uh, it it helps with the schedule. It helps with injuries. It's it's just a fairly foolproof strategy to have as many of those guys as you'll be discovering over the next four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. I had to ship out. I'll have to ship out here in the next couple of years. I have too many contracts yep. coming up. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, that will. Yeah, that's what happens when you have. What do I have? Six first rounders in the real NHL draft from the 2023 yeah. draft. So we'll see how those well, you know. progress. You'd be surprised. Matthew Wood is one of those picks. Um, <laughs> if, if, if I may offer listening. a word of advice on the air, uh, you should be buying at this deadline. 
prices are going yeah. to be low. There are. I can't you sell. Can't sell. You, well, who, are you, who are you selling? I can't sell. I, I need. Uh, well, it would be like I'd, I'd be taking pennies on the dollar. At you Kopitar, won't. You won't be able to 50%, move them. Look it. at the guys who are available yeah. right now at fifty percent. Oh, like I know. Ranting in. Yeah. And Kopitar is good and all. Like, I might be able to get a second for him or something, like, closer to the deadline. No one's going to have the money. But I got to win. No one's going to have the money. Yeah. But. Well, and if you're, if you're stuck around to the hour five mark of this podcast, we got a new rule in our fantasy league coming up here because of. Me? <laughs> anti tanking. <laughs> anti tanking rules. We won't name any names, but. Um, uh, so we have bottom three do a playoff for the first overall pick starting this year. So it stops tanking per se, but there's going to be less selling. At the oh, trade there deadline. won't be though. So the, this this trade deadline looks insane, and no one has any money. So the reason I think that you should be looking is that Rantanen is going to get. Uh, I think the rumor is two firsts and a prospect. Good. That's a good price for him. Panarin, there's no offers on right now. Uh, Zuccarello, Pavelski, these are guys who are not going to get anything. And actually, to throw this even further, that big deal that went down the other day, Quinn Hughes, uh, it was, I was talking to that owner because I haven't stopped shitting on him since the deal happened. And he said, you're telling me if I went to Debert and said, I want this for these guys, he would have said yes. And I said, I think he absolutely would have said yes for two reasons. One, he could have turned around and just flipped all those guys for more than you got for them. <laughs> and two, I would have told him he'd be an idiot to say no <laughs> because he can get more on the flips. Are you talking the pasta the trade pasta and all trade, that? Yeah. I probably would have said no still just because I'm so you, like you're, stuck you, to the... Got, I got, I got my blinders on yeah. for two years what's, from now. What's the, what's the trade yeah. equivalent of erectile dysfunction? Because that <laughs> we got to think of a word for that. Like you got transaction dysfunction. You know, you're you're adverse to trading, but you shouldn't be because we have seen time and time again that assets like this particular trade involve Pasternak, Quinn Hughes, Zegris, and Ottinger. Those guys are worth at least two. A to A plus prospects each. And this guy got Smith, who's as good a prospect as you're going to get. He got Stankoven. He got Jaeger. He got Yurov. And he got probably a f- between a fourth and sixth overall pick next year. That's a huge undersell. It's huge undersell. Quinn Hughes alone is worth Will Smith and we'll say Yurov. Pasternak at 7.7 is probably worth the rest of that package. And then there's Zegris and Ottinger. Like, you could have flipped them for a lot more than that. You could have. Quinn Hughes is on a seven-year, $7 million contract? Yeah. I could have. But just like the... We're, we're going off on a tangent here in, in our own specific league. But it's like, I don't know there's guys out there with the type of prospects I would have bought those all right here's my argument against that you're already pretty much locked into a bottom three spot your odds at winning celebrini would go through the roof surely you could move trevor zegris for an improved return keep but he would have wanted the first too right the the first well the first wasn't his he it was it was you could have moved a different first or or like there wouldn't even had to have been a first it could have been all prospects like what he said to me i don't it would have cost me leo um, it would have been may probably not like no Cooley's already playing, so it would have been Leo. Um, it would have been the Winnipeg first, and right. then you know what he said? Who's, who's been next? He said it would have cost. Who you and I think you'd have a, Carlson's the only guy in this deal that I think you'd be like the equivalent package from yeah. you would have been. Carlson, Zellweger, Genther, Musty, and Kemmel. And I said, well, I'd argue that that package is a hell of a lot better than what you got. But again, like the only A plus guy in that package is Leo Carlson. Zellweger is a shifty, like, if you could get out from him and basically be getting pastor deck for him, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, like I said, I think that. You probably could have talked your way out of it being Carlson. And I think 
Yeah, if it was someone else but Carlson and not Mitchkov, then sure. Yeah. Maybe even swap Carlson for Mitchkov just because he's a bit of a wild card if at this you, point. If you put Mitchkov in that out. deal, I bet you could have kept one of those other guys. And come on, you're telling uh-huh. like you would have done that deal. Yeah, I guess I would have turned around and them all. just started competing next year. Well, I'd not even have to flip them; and just start signing guys. You certainly but, could. Have. Uh, I mean, look at what. Uh, yeah. Look at what Est. I still would have been left with quite the. Look at what Est sure. is doing this year. Well, and that's the other thing. You have to dump contracts. A move like this would have been a year earlier than you wanted to be, but at sixty cents on the dollar. Anyways. 15 minutes of a new segment we call How Trades Work in Our Brains. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for enjoying the World Juniors with us. Ev, we got to do something about where you live, pal. Uh, we we got to put some soundproof barriers on them windows because I can't be listening to Hell's <laughs> you know? Angels all night. <laughs> it's a fire truck. Come on. They're all trying to save lives. Come some slack. Are you, are you that yeah. close to the station? No, but I'm off 14th well, it Street. Could have been so a policeman it's... then, and they're just out there harassing. No, I can oh, see it. Saw... Oh, are you at ground level? Here. No, no, I'm eighth floor. Oh. I got a little bird's eye. Oh, there so you go. I love it. All right, buddy. Let's enjoy the rest of the World Juniors. I can't believe we pumped out an yep. hour and kind of day off tomorrow. Just bummer, bummer of uh, games tomorrow. No point uh, even really I'm okay watching. With it. I but, could really uh, use your help tomorrow. I gotta figure out how to install a toilet and maybe even a bidet. We'll see. Oh, bidet! Yeah. Fancy. Ah, my diet. Installing a toilet's a piece of cake. Is it a brand, new, a brand toilet? new toilet? It will be. I gotta go buy it tomorrow. Okay. okay. Yeah, you see. Get a good wax ring. I don't know what any of that and means. A wa- yeah, you just go to the hardware store. I need a wax ring. And the toilet might even come with I one. It but... comes with it. I got to drill a hole in my uh, in my undercarriage of my sink to get this hot water bidet going. But man, I'm going to save a mint on toilet paper because you've... between all... You know what I had last week? No one's listening at this point. Anyways, I had Pete's 73 wings for the first time in a very long time, and they are not nearly as good as I remember. I'm sorry, Pete's 73. You could still sponsor our, our show, but uh, they were not. Step your wing game up. 73, they were not then. very good, man. But uh, yeah, you know. Saskatchewan, Pete's 73, totally though. Football game out here. I was yeah. telling Pauline all yeah. the stories about Pete's 73 and the old man and all that shit. I walked by the other day and. Uh, I saw the 40 pack. Did we get a 70 pack? Or was it, was it the 40 50. pack that we got? All the, it, was it was a 50. 50. Yeah. We got the 50. That's right. Played some vids. Oh, yeah. NHL yeah. didn't know what was coming back then. Parachutes the whole time. Yeah. yeah hold on. All right. This one, uh, we managed to get an hour and 12 minutes out of a show that had about 70 words in the notes. So that's not too bad. We like the sound of our own voices. Thanks for tuning in to Puck Dynasty this week. We will talk to you next week. <laughs> Happy New Year. Year. All right. See you, buddy.